All right, guys, it's Super 32 week, one of the biggest weekends in the entire calendar for high school wrestling. We've got Super 32, almost 200 nationally ranked high schoolers. I want to break down five of the biggest storylines that are going to be happening in the boys high school division at Super 32. We got to start out with the one you probably already know. It's Bo Bassett and Daniel Zapata part three. These guys wrestled at who's number one in 2023. Daniel Zapata got the fall. They wrestled two weeks ago in who's number one again. And this time it was Bo Bassett getting the win. It was a 12-6 decision for Bassett. He won convincingly. He got three takedowns, but Zapata got a takedown near the end, left the door open. And now we got to wonder what's going to happen if they meet again. And the really interesting thing is we thought that Bassett versus Zapata part two was going to be the conclusion, the finale of the series. Zapata was registered at 150 pounds for Super 32. But right after the match was over, he looked at the camera and said, <laughs> said one more. I want to wrestle Bo Bassett one more time. And then within a few minutes, he decided he was going to cut back down to 144 pounds. That's what he's doing. And this guy is, he's serious. I mean, he's, been training. He's already at Gilroy, which has the Cortez brothers. He's got, you know, his, his brother, Moses Mendoza uh, in the room. Ty ice is there, but he he's been training with extra training partners in the lead up to this event. Right? He's brought Sergio Vega in from Arizona. They was a p photo of them training together. Uh, Nikade Zinkin, Joe Toscano guys that are in his bracket at super 32 that are Californians, really tough guys. They've been coming to help him train, get extra feels. And so Zapata, he's putting the work in. Obviously, you know, Bo Bassett, he's got the machine gun mindset. He's he's going hard. He hasn't slowed his training down one bit. And his room is insane too. Uh, I think these guys both believe 100% they're going to win this match at 144 pounds. They're opposite sides of the bracket. They're one and two seeds. There's no guarantee this match happens because I think there are like 14 nationally ranked wrestlers at 144. But they are the top two seeds, and if it goes down on Sunday afternoon, you're not going to want to miss it. So much drama. It's, once again, for the second time in two weeks, the biggest possible match in high school wrestling, and we could see it. I hope we do. I'm sure you guys do, too. Uh, yeah, that would be awesome. Who's number one is going to be well represented, not just Bassett and Zapata, but we could see a whole bunch of who's number one rematches. And for, for me, I, I would love to see that. Um, at 126 pounds, probably the match I'm most excited about, the rematch, Anthony Knox, Aaron Seidel. Seidel had Knox all but beat in who's number one. He got the escape and the ride out. He was up 1-0 with riding time locked towards the end of the match. And somehow Anthony Knox gets it on a high crotch, finishes late in the match to take the win 3-2. Um, you know, so dramatic. 12 seconds left when he got that takedown. Can Seidel complete that game plan that he almost executed at who's number one? Or can Anthony Knox figure out another way to beat Aaron Seidel? Uh, could see that one. 113 pounds. Dom Munenaretto, the two-time U17 world champ. He's going to be wrestling Ignacio Villasenor again if they both make the finals. And it was Villasenor getting the win last time. And it was an upset. Munaretto, he's got the two world titles and he beat Via Senor a couple years ago when they met for the first time. So that was a lot of people's pick, but it was Via Senor who did it and he did it with a perfectly executed game plan. Uh, does anything change if they meet in a tournament format where they've got to go through a bunch of other tough guys you know, along the way? I don't know. We'll see. Could see that rematch. And uh, on top of that, we could see another Jax Forrest, Seth Mendoza match. These guys have wrestled four times in the last year and they could make it part five. Jax Forrest won it, who's number one. That moved him to three and one in the series. But we know Mendoza's tough, and on the right day, he teched Jax Forrest. So we could see that one again. Also, 138. We got Drew Gorman and Sergio Vega. Those are the top two seeds in their, in their bracket. And, uh, you know, wouldn't be surprised if we saw them run it back. It was Vega with the really unique feel, and it was kind of their first meeting in folk style. They had, they had met also in the Fargo finals in freestyle, but... It was Vega once again coming out on top against Drew Gorman. Can Gorman make adjustments? I don't know. We could see it again. And then the other one we could see, Cade Ziola and Angelo Posada. They are uh, going to be the one and two seeds at 215 pounds. The thing that could be interesting and potentially break up that matchup is that Anthony Harris is is the returning Super 32 champ. He's going to be the three seed at that weight. So he could he could break you know break that thing up. But it was you know Posada beating. 
him at, in Fargo in the Fargo finals. And so who knows what's going to happen there, but we could see Zayola and the, and Posada. And then the other who's number one guys in the mix that, that maybe not necessarily rematches, but Melvin Miller, he's in at 157. And then at 150 pounds, we actually have three guys that were at who's number one, but did not meet at who's number one. We've got Rabadou. We've got Maddox Shaw. We've got Colin Guy. All those guys in the mix. Uh, the two that with a lot of history there are Landon Rabadou and Maddox Shaw. They didn't wrestle each other at who's number one, but Rabadou beat Maddox Shaw in the Fargo semifinals. Last year, though, Super 32 final, it was Maddox Shaw beating Rabadou in the final. So what's going to happen there at 150? I don't know, but a whole bunch of Super 30, excuse me, a whole bunch of who's number one guys in the mix at Super 32. Great storyline to follow there. All right, another storyline you guys are going to want to follow, the Bachman brothers. You know about these guys already because of what they've done on the world stage. Both Joe and Fred Bachman were in the U-17 World Finals this summer, but we haven't seen them against domestic competition throughout the summer because they don't participate in the USA Wrestling freestyle system because they're on the Puerto Rican national team. So how are they going to look? I mean, there's a there's a realistic shot that both of these guys are in the finals and, and maybe even win at Super 32. Uh, they're going to Faith Christian. You're going to see them a lot now that we're getting into the folk style season. And especially Fred, he's now just a freshman. So you're going to be getting to hear these names a whole lot. Some really interesting things to follow with the Bachman brothers. Fred, he's at 113. Already mentioned earlier that we've got Ignacio Villasenor and Don Munoretto in the mix, the top two guys in the country. Fred Bachman had a super close match with Don Munoretto in the U-17 World Finals. It was razor thin. Munoretto got the victory. But you better believe that Fred Bachman, who's the five seed, is you know believes he's going to win this weight class. And if he does, there's a good chance he's number one in the country as a freshman. Keep an eye on Fred Bachman. Joe Bachman, really interesting storyline with him at 120 pounds. He is the number one seed. He could end up seeing his teammate and a guy who's ranked second in the country, 120 pounds, Gage Batero in the finals. These guys are our teammates. Batero's the three seed and uh, Bachman the one. How weird would that be? How often is it that we see high school teammates squaring up in the Super 32 finals? I can't think of a time. I'm sure it's happened, but that would be wild and it could be something that we see and, you know, could dictate what Faith Christian is going to do with their lineup at 120 and 126. So keep an eye on the Bachman brothers. I hope you haven't forgotten about them as they've been out of the USA wrestling uh, freestyle system. They're going to be back and you got to pay attention. Those guys are going to be ready to roll at super 32. A fourth storyline you're going to want to follow. I wanted to choose a deep bracket. It's hard to choose because really they're all so, so good. 157 pounds though. Eight guys in that bracket are ranked in the top 10 in their weight class. Melvin Miller, number three. Colin Rath is number four. Leo Contino, number five. Will Denny, who's coming up from 150. He's also number five down at 150. Brogan Tucker is seven. Jacob Herm is eight. Vince Buzakis, nine. Benjamin Weeder, 10. All those guys in one single bracket. Unbelievable. We're going to see chaos from start to finish at 150 pounds. And part of that is because Vince Buzakis is down at the, the four or the five seed, but he's on the same side of the bracket as Melvin Miller. Took a couple losses at Elite Eight Duels. He was coming off injury, adjusting from freestyle to folk style. I don't expect him to, to be at Elite Eight form. I expect him to be returning back to the form that he's had previously when he's won big events like this. Vince Buzakis and Melvin Miller was a match that we thought we might see in Fargo in the finals. Didn't get it because Buzakis was hurt. We could get it in a semifinal here at Super 32, but... Don't forget, this thing is littered with top 10 guys in the country. So 157 pounds, circle that bracket. Uh, you know, really all the brackets are great, but that is the one that, that I think has the potential to go a lot of different ways. Um, Colin Rath could win this thing. He has before. Melvin Miller has won this thing before. Brogan Tucker's looked really, really good. I mean, it's, it's loaded. 157, keep your eyes on that weight. A fifth storyline that I'm really interested to follow is Michael Mako up at heavyweight. He's finally made the move up to 285 pounds. This summer was the closest he's been to heavyweight. He was 110 kilos at the U17 World Championships. And 110 kilos, you know, that's kind of, you know, in between that, that 220 and that heavyweight range. And now Mako committed. He's going 285. He's going to have some tough com competition there at heavyweight and you know, how big is this guy going to look? That's one of the big questions, but really how good is he going to look in this field? He'll have 
the Fargo champ, Rocco Delegata, in the bracket. And that's the match that I'm really excited to see because Delegata, he got it done at Fargo. We didn't know if he would, and he did. He looked great. So Cornell commit, really, really good. Mako is seated in the semifinals to see either number six, Mark Effendian, or number seven, Jacob Levy. Uh, he's already beaten both of those guys in the past. So you would think he can, if he can repeat those performances that we may see Mako in the finals. He was in the finals last year, but fell in the finals to Anthony Harris. And now can he get it done up a weight? It's a big question for me. And if he can, I think his stock as a recruit is going to rise because he's going to keep climbing the rankings. Obviously, you know, the pedigree there with his father, Stephen Mako, who was a two-time NCAA champ and, and, you know, wrestled for both Iowa and Oklahoma state. There's just so much intrigue around Michael Mako. And now that he's really all in at heavyweight, can't wait to see what's going to happen. Those are five things that I'm going to be following at super 32. There are a whole bunch more storylines. Please go on the website, check out our preview content. And don't forget this Saturday and Sunday, October 12th and 13th, Greensboro, North Carolina, super 32 is going down. It is going to be unreal.